In this video, I want to talk about the syllabus which we're going to be covering for Bayesian statistics. And the entirety of the syllabus is going to be based around the Bayesian formula, which I've written down here. So what do the elements of this Bayesian formula mean? Well, the goal of any sort of Bayesian inference process in general is to derive what we call the posterior distribution. So what does a posterior distribution actually mean? Well, the idea is here, what we're trying to do is we're trying to assign a probability density value to all the different values of theta. So what we'll get out in the end is something whereby we have, for all different values of theta, which theta could potentially take on, we're going to have a value of the PDF. So in the example where theta is constrained to lie between the values in 0 and 1, for example, if theta was some sort of probability value, we might actually get out a posterior distribution which looks something like this red line which I've drawn here. And by virtue of the fact that this is a probability, obviously the area underneath this curve has to sum to 1. Okay, so that's the goal of Bayesian inference, but how do we actually obtain that goal? Well, we obtain it via this formula and via the sort of terms on the right-hand side. So, in the numerator, what do each of these terms mean? Well, essentially the first term on the numerator, the probability of the data given theta, is what we call the likelihood. So what do we mean by likelihood? Well, you can think about it as a sort of probability. What is the probability that we would have obtained that data given our choice of theta? Is not exactly correct because technically it's not actually a probability, but you can, for all intents and purposes, think about it in those sort of terms. So the idea with the likelihood is that we specify a model for actually generating our data and then what we say is, for each particular value of theta, what would be the probability, if that model was correct, that we would have actually obtained our data? Okay, so that's the first term on the right-hand side. What's the second term on the numerator? So this is what we call the prior. And what does a prior actually represent? Well, it represents our sort of pre-experimental knowledge of the parameter values. So in the example here where we might be thinking about what is the probability that a random individual has a particular disease? We might imagine that, well, obviously the probability has to lie between 0 and 1. We might imagine that all values of, or all probabilities rather, of having that disease are equally likely. So we would specify that the prior density in terms of the prior probability of an individual having that disease is uniform on 0, 1. And I should say here straight off that the prior is often where non-Bayesians actually think that Bayesian statistics is being fairly subjective. And whilst that is, that is true, I should say that as the amount of data that you collect increases, then the prior pays or plays less and less importance in terms of its determination of the posterior. So that's the sort of first thing to note. The other thing I should mention is that there are a number of methods for making this prior as objective as possible. So these methods which we're going to cover are things called, for example, Jeffrey's prior and also another method which we call sort of reference priors. And don't worry if you don't know what each of these things are, we're going to cover those in due, due course. The final part of the Bayesian formula is what I just call the denominator. And it looks perhaps like it's the most simple term on the right hand side when in fact it normally turns out to be the most difficult. And the reason it's the most difficult is that essentially what we need to do is we're working out what is the probability we would have obtained that data over all choices of theta, because we don't know exactly what the value of theta is. So because of that, what we end up doing is we end up having to do a relatively complicated integral, and it becomes more and more complicated the more or the higher the number of parameters that we actually have in our model. Okay, so the Bayesian formula forms the centerpiece of the entire syllabus, but how actually is the syllabus going to play out in practice? Early on in the syllabus, what we're actually going to do is we're going to talk about the circumstance whereby the prior and the likelihood are what we call conjugate. So what does conjugacy mean? Well, don't worry if you don't know exactly what it means, but essentially what it does is it ensures that the posterior which results is analytic. What do we mean by analytic? We mean that you can actually write down a closed form equation for the posterior. By closed form I just mean that you can write down an equation which des describes the posterior exactly.
So when the prior and the likelihood distributions are themselves what we call conjugate, that makes Bayesian inference really, really easy because of the fact that we can just write down really quickly what the posterior is. Whilst assuming that the prior and the likelihood are conjugate is an oversimplification, it can actually yield very good insight into what the posterior would look like under sort of less restrictive assumptions about the prior and the likelihood. However, we would like to be able to generalize Bayesian inference and Bayesian statistics to deal with circumstances whereby the prior and the likelihood are just sort of arbitrary choices. So when the prior and the likelihood aren't or are no longer conjugate, that means that we need to use some sort of computational method to actually get some insight into the posterior distribution. And to begin with, we're going to talk about three sort of methods for gaining insight into the posterior distribution. The first of these assumptions is what we call the grid approximation. The second is a sort of algorithm which is known as the Metropolis-Hastings algorithm, which is a really relatively powerful way of what we call sampling from the posterior distribution. So don't worry if you don't know what sampling is, we're going to cover that in due course, but it's just essentially a way of gaining insight into the posterior distribution. And then finally, we're also going to talk about what is known as Gibbs sampling, which is, again, a very powerful and very commonly used computational method for gaining insight into the posterior distribution. We're also going to make use of Bayesian statistical software, which is open source. In particular, to do Gibbs sampling, we're going to use a software program, which is open source, which is called Bugs. And it's a really, really nice and intuitive way of actually doing Bayesian statistics in practice when the particular assumptions which underlie Gibbs sampling methods actually are abided by. OK, so that's the early part of the syllabus. Later on, what we're actually going to do is we're going to talk about some sort of more advanced concepts. So we're going to talk about how linear and in general, generalized linear models uh, of regression actually can make use of Bayesian statistics and how these sort of Bayesian methods actually are, in my view, a lot better than classical statistics for the case of regression. We're also going to talk about what is known as hierarchical models. So don't worry if you don't know what a hierarchical model is. We're going to cover that in due course. But essentially what it is, is it's placing a prior on prior parameters. So if you imagine that we were talking about up here the parameter theta, when we were talking about the probability that an individual has a disease, if you were to imagine that that particular distribution was in some way characterized by some other parameters, so if we were to assume it was, let's say, a beta distribution, and that beta distribution has, in general, two inputs, then those two inputs we could imagine also having some sort of prior distribution. So that's what a hierarchical model means in general. Finally, we're going to talk about some relatively advanced concepts in Bayesian statistics, which are going to be mainly composed of simulation methods. So simulation methods, which are potentially faster than those three methods, which I've indicated over here, the grid approximation, Metropolis Hastings, and Gibbs sampling. And we're also going to touch on Bayesian decision theory. So Bayesian decision theory is essentially the theory as to how we should make an optimal decision under uncertainty when we can associate a cost with making the wrong decision.